Bobby, as we were, we were talking about, we saw some social media posts about um, Lake Michigan being one of the most dangerous lakes in the country, if not the, the deadliest lake in the country. Um, how, how do those numbers reflect to reality? Well, you need to remember that um, Lake Michigan is a, it's a huge body of water. It's more like an inland sea than, than it is a lake. So um, to try and compare Lake Michigan to, um, you know, to Higgins Lake or to Lake Tahoe or, you know, some, some other lake a, a, across the country, the first thing of note is that just by sheer size alone, um, it, it will have more drownings because there's just simply more, more surface area. Add to that the fact that there's a huge population density down at the, at the southern end of, of Lake Michigan, all the way from um, the Grand Rapids area, all the way through Chicago, up around um, to like um, Kenosha, Wisconsin, and, and even Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So one of the, one of the biggest takeaways is that any body of water can be dangerous. Any body of water can be deadly. Um, the fact that Lake Michigan is one of, if not the most deadliest lake in the, in the United States is based mostly on the fact of, it, of its size and its orientation and the presence of a large population in the area. Let's, um, I guess, confine the question to the, the Great Lakes. How does, how does Lake Michigan rank among those larger bodies of water that we have here in the U.S.? So, so typically, um, we average uh, just under 100 fatal drownings every year in the five Great Lakes. We're 80, high 80s right now, depending on, on which year we're talking about. Um, and Lake Michigan typically has about half. So um, Lake Michigan is uh, the most, has the most drownings of, of all five Great Lakes, um, almost all five, the other four put together. Um, so it is much more dangerous than the other Great Lakes. But again, a lot of that has to do with um, both the population density down at the south end and the, the north-south orientation, which is where, you know, our storms typically move just like they are today, you know, from the, the southwest to the, the northeast. Um, and as they come across the lake, they create dangerous currents and high wind, wind and wave activity on, on the lakes. Do you think people in general underestimate uh, Lake Michigan when it comes to the danger? I think people uh, almost universally underestimate the dangers of Lake Michigan. And I think, unfortunately, they also overestimate their, their own ability um, in the water. And it's something that, that we try to remind people of uh, every opportunity that, that we get is that you may be a great swimmer in the, the backyard condo pool, or you may even be a lap swimmer at the, the local YMCA um, but that doesn't prepare you for the kind of conditions that can occur on one of the Great Lakes, especially Lake Michigan. Um, the water in the pool is always warm. It's always flat. It's always a set distance from one side to the other. The bottom is always consistent. Um, and um, so it's much, much safer. And when you get to Lake Michigan, even if you're an experienced lap swimmer at a pool, um, swimming in colder water and swimming in rougher water and swimming where there are dangerous currents and, and waves and wind um, is a completely different experience. And it's much more dangerous and you need a specific skill set uh, in order to survive. What's some advice you would give to people to keep them safe along the lakes and in, in the water um, throughout the year? One, one, of the, one of the most important things that, that we always push is um, a drowning prevention strategy called FLIP float and follow. You know, every child in America knows how to stop, drop, and roll if their clothing catches on fire. We do fire drills in schools. We do lockdown drills and tornado drills. And some places in Illinois and Indiana do earthquake drills. And the fact is that drowning will kill more people than fire, lightning, tornadoes, school shooters, and earthquakes combined. Um, and most people don't have a strategy like stop, drop, and roll if they get in trouble in the water. So we want people to understand that if they flip over onto their back, that will allow them to breathe whenever they want to, keep their head above the surface of the water, float to calm yourself down, float to conserve your energy, float to understand that panic is the first stage of drowning. And if you can prevent panic, you're far better off. And then float to notice is the current carrying you in one, one direction or another, and then follow a path back to safety where you're avoiding fighting against the current because the current is stronger than you can swim. So flip, float, and follow is a life-saving strategy that we um, push all throughout the Great Lakes region. Is there anything else about the, the dangers of Lake Michigan or the, the safety advice that we haven't talked about yet that you would want to pass along? 
Yeah, there's, there, I mean, we could go on for hours and hours and hours, but, um, you know, the weather plays a, a tremendous uh, part in some of the drownings that we have. We know that on warm, windy weekends, uh, we will have fatal drownings on, on the Great Lakes. It's because there will be more people at the beach. They won't understand um, the dangerous currents and um, our, we have a dangerous current explainer video that's available on YouTube. We can send you the link to that so you can share it. Um, and people need to understand that, that when the weather changes, and it changes very rapidly here in the Great Lakes region, that the conditions at the lake will also change and can be deteriorate very, very quickly. Um, and, you know, we've, we track the drownings on, on the Great Lakes. Since 2010, there have been more than 1,100 fatal drownings on the, on the five Great Lakes, um, and only 13 of them were wearing life jackets. So we're big advocates for life jacket use, not only if you're kayaking or boating or sailing, but um, even if you're just going to the beach, if you're taking your children to the beach and you have more than, than, than one child, so it's hard to keep them within arm's reach, uh, then um, put them in a life jacket and it will keep them much, much safer. If somebody gets into trouble and you notice that somebody's in trouble, have someone call 911, try to reach something to them or throw something to them rather than swimming out to them. But if you do make the choice to actually try to make a swimming rescue, take something with you that floats. You know, every year we have people who or would-be rescuers who end up um, fatally drowning themselves as they attempt to, to rescue somebody. Um, and if they would have uh, taken something with them that floats, if they would have worn a life jacket or they would have taken a, um, a soccer ball or a boogie board or, or something that floats with them, um, then they may have been able to save both the life, their own life and the life of the drowning victim. Um. Two more quick things here real quick, um, just because I'm, I'm looking more at the, the social media posts that we are um, um, using as a sort of the basis for the story. Um, yeah. Do you have any information about where um, drownings are um, dangers in Lake Michigan rank on a on a global scale? Um, you know, uh Drowning is the leading cause of accidental death in children one to four in the United States. And it's the second leading cause of accidental death in um, children under 15 in the United States. So um, we do know that, that some third world countries have a huge, huge problem with drowning um, that, that uh, pay, makes the, the Great Lakes pale in comparison to, to them. But, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big problem. It, 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 Really, it, it, if we had uh, any other incident, whether it was a, a mass shooting or, you know, kind of an epidemic kind of thing where, you know, we were to lose uh, 100 people in, in a year, um, that, that would be, that would be a, a big deal. Um, you know, the, the drownings on the, on the Great Lakes happen typically one at a time or in small clusters, two or, two or three um, on days that the dangerous conditions occur. Um, had they all happened at the, at the same time, it would get much, much more news coverage than it, than it does. And I think in some ways that's unfortunate because it's this little trickle effect where, you know, uh, 80, 85, 90 people a year doesn't sound like a, a great deal. Um, but if you're a loved one of someone who had a fatal drowning on, on the Great Lakes, um, it affects you directly. And all of these drowning victims have mothers and fathers, and many of them have uh, siblings. Oftentimes the siblings are with them. Um, at the lake when they when they have a, a fatal drowning. Um, the bystanders and the would-be rescuers and the professional rescuers, all of these people are affected. So it's not only the, the number of drownings that we have, but uh, the ramifications for the drownings go far beyond that. So with 1,100 victims over the last 10 years, um, doesn't seem like a lot, but uh, I guarantee you that the actual number of victims is in the, in the tens of thousands. Their social media post specifically made a statement that it was in the top 10 most dangerous in the world. Is that something that we can verify or is that um, probably, probably more just the number they tossed out there? Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know where that statistic came from. Um, I know uh, there was a study done probably 20 years ago that identified um, the southern end of, of Lake Michigan as being one of the most dangerous uh, places in the whole United States, both um, not just for lakes, but but for any beaches. Um, but I haven't seen any research recently um, uh, about that. And again, drowning can happen um, in a backyard pool. It can happen at a, at a small inland lake. 
So um, it's very important that people take water safety seriously and that they sim simply follow basic precautions. And, and, and a lot of it is, is well known. You know, don't swim alone. Um, don't drink and dive. Uh, you know, make sure that you have a, a buddy with you. Make sure that you know how to swim. Wear your life jacket. Don't just, um, you know, pack it in your kayak or on your stand-up paddleboard. Actually wear it. It's kind of like a parachute. It, it, you may never need it, but if, if you need it, um, it's got to be on and it's got to be available. Um, so uh, we, we love to see people actually wearing their life jackets. And a final question that just kind of something that I, I've thought for a while, and I just wanted to see what your thoughts on it were. Um, I feel people, when it comes to the lakes, they hear the term lake and they, they don't give it the type of respect they would give an ocean. Is that something you guys yeah, feel? As absolutely. Well? Absolutely. Um, we, we, we call them lakes, but they are far more like inland seas. Um, they behave much more like inland seas. Um, we don't have tides. The tides, we have a little tiny tides, you know, a little, little one or two inch tides. Um, but we do have uh, significant wave action. And with the, the length of the lake being 300 miles, we call that fetch. So the distance uh, the wind can travel over water is um, 300 miles. So you can generate large waves on, on the Great Lakes. And so they become very problematic. And e even on days where... Um, the wind is offshore, that poses specific problems. The, the, it's not wave action that's a problem, but if you're on a kayak or on an inflatable and the wind is blowing away from shore, it can carry you very fast and very far away from shore and make it much more difficult for you to get back. So it's much more dangerous than, um, you know, than, than, than most inland lakes. And people need to respect that. And people need to understand that um, it's far more like the inland seas than it is uh, an actual lake. Hey, Bobby, I appreciate you again taking some time to uh, talk with us this afternoon. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Take care, my friend. You too.